his tooth. I don't know what he did. He's like missing his front tooth. Cool. On padded day. Now we're going to continue to work on different elements to, to develop depth. Uh, along with that, though, we'll do some preparation, getting ready for our spring game. And that will be open uh, to the public. And hopefully I'll see all you guys there. And I know our players are excited about that. And uh, I think it's a good thing that some normalcy is coming back to the state of Wyoming. So this time, questions. <clears throat> no questions. Yes, Cody. Um, Craig, have you uh, have you guys gotten anywhere yet on a punt or kick re punt kick return? Uh, you know what we do on punts. Um, Aiden Everhart is probably going to be our punt returner. We're still sorting through some things on kickoff return. Um, you know, maybe Titus Swain has done some good things, and really, quite frankly, over the last scrimmage, Titus really had a good good scrimmage uh, on Saturday. Did some very productive things. We purposely cut the reps down, you know, on, on X and Trey and, and Titus has really stepped on his stead. So I think he'll probably right now be a lead guy for kickoff returns. Okay, go ahead, Michael. Yeah, what, uh, what, 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 what is the format of the scrimmage going to be? Is there going to be like, I know sometimes there's like weird point systems and all that sort of thing. No, we're, we're pretty, we, we, uh, <clears throat> You need to understand we're not from California. We're pretty traditional here. Um, and so we're going to play a regular game. And uh, at times we have had a running clock. I think we'll have a normal game. I'll look at the length of quarters that we have, but I think it's really important. We're going to try to play all the players who uh, have participated this spring. And I think that that's really a good thing. I know that there's some guys who, you know, maybe from this area, they're going to have some relatives come and watch and play. And so to get them on the field is going to be important. So I'll, we'll look at our injury situation, but right now I'm encouraged. I think we can pretty much play a full game uh, and it, it, there's not going to be a scoring system. It'll be a, now we'll split the squads up. I'll let you know on Thursday how that is, but, um, and I really want to encourage our fans. I, I don't know how many of them, you know, look at this website, but, um, you know, it's an opportunity to get back to doing some normal things and all the arrows are pointing up. And so uh, it's going to be a game like atmosphere uh, from what I understand. Well, I saw that uh, the horse, we got the horse is even going to be at the game. So I think we got a new, his name's war paint. And uh, the other guy, the other guy we had one time backed up about ran, ran into me. So we got a, a new guy this time. That is a true story. I was like, damn, I didn't know I'd come to Wyoming and get run over by a horse. Who's up here, Michael or Davis? Yeah, Craig, how did the uh, how did the quarterbacks perform in the scrimmage over the weekend? Has there, there been any separation between those two? No, they, we've had some a really good battle in between um, um, Sean and, and um, Levi. Uh, the, the guy who's really made some great strides is Hank Gibbs. Um, as the number three and you know Hank is the legacy his father had played here he's a tall angular guy he's put on some lean muscle mass and he's he's developing into a really really good quarterback and so I'm not saying he's going to be in position to to uh, jump over one of those two guys but uh, we're well, well pleased with his progress and we've put our quarterbacks under quite a bit of duress. Craig if, if Craig if there's not a, a level of separation between you know, Sean and Levi come in at a day on Saturday. Is it? Is there any chance that this competition goes into the fall? Um, a little bit. I think that that's going to be important for us. What, what I'm not going to do is just get into, uh, you know, having musical chairs there. Uh, we'll take a look and, 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 and name a starter unless some things really become <clears throat> um, uneven during fall camp. That does not mean that there, there won't be an evaluation during the fall. So, I, you know, I, I don't think you're going to see an either or. Uh, I really don't. However, I can tell you the competition is, is razor thin. It's been very, very good. Cody? Greg, in 2019, uh, Rome Weber and Braden Smith really battled it out in the spring, then they battled it out in the fall. I'm yep. wondering how that battle's going uh, this year uh, as they're doing it all over again. Well, there's a battle, but I, I think Braden has separated himself. Um, and, and he's a little bit injured right now, but 
you know, he's had a couple of really good scrimmages. Rome has done okay. Um, you know, he certainly improved, but right now I think that there's a separation between the two. Yes, Cody. Uh, Craig, what can you say about the resilience of Alonzo Velasquez and all he's been through? Kind of like Sean Chambers, just some freak things, some weird things, but here he is again. Well, I'm really glad he's here. And, um, you know, he's, uh, <clears throat> he's, he's working on the need that's, you know, it's got some, I don't know, it, he's getting to be an old man. And, uh, um, you know, his knowledge and what he's doing and his perseverance is certainly important. He adds great value to our offensive line, and we're really glad. I, I know that Coach Frazier is really happy with him, and, and I am as well. Michael? Ha has there been separation between those those, those three tackles uh, in terms of who's who might get the nod? Yeah, I think right now, uh, you know, we, we've got a little bit of a separation, <clears throat> I think, between – Velasquez and Crum, uh, and Rudy's probably a little bit behind the other two. Doesn't mean Rudy won't play or be prepared to play. Appreciate Rudy's efforts out there, but the other two are playing better than him right now. Cody? Uh, we've heard about X and Trey and Titus. Uh, I'm curious how Dwayne McNeely's looked this spring to you, Coach. Well, Dwayne has not been able to do very much. He's uh, He's got uh, uh, repaired surgery uh, that he's going through, and so it's been really hard to get an evaluation. We haven't been able to, and so we're hopeful that, that that'll come about uh, this uh, this fall. Davis? Craig, when you guys brought in Trey Smith, I guess almost three years ago now, he, he talked about you know using this to maybe get a shot at the NFL. I'm curious, given his age and just the short shelf life, that there typically is for running backs. Are you surprised at all that he came back for another year? And do you guys have any conversations about his future? Yeah, we, you know, we certainly did. We had a, a good conversation and it's been heartwarming. You know, we vetted Trey quite a bit. Um, and, and sometimes when guys come in and transfer, it's a, it's a good solution. Other times it's not. And so we tried to do a lot of things on the front end. He's been very, very open about, you know, his desire to play in the NFL. His father played in the NFL, but it's been encouraging too. He's taken advantage of his time here uh, academically and really done well in school. And so that's encouraging. Um, I'm not going to tell you what he, he did run for the pro scouts and it was very impressive uh, his time. Uh, and so I, he's going to be a guy that's going to be on their radar and, and hopefully we can, package a great year for him and he can package a great year for us and he's a team first guy and uh, I think he's got a lot of ability and it's been really encouraging I know he's a little bit older but I think he's got a long shelf life Cody Greg a couple for you um, I, I don't think we've asked is Tim Polisek going to be coaching from the booth and do you like a coach to be down there to talk to your young quarterbacks and stuff when they come off the field aside from put a headset on maybe um, you know, I feel the other way. Uh, you know, I coordinated uh, for a lot of years, and I found that uh, I was a better coordinator when I was upstairs. I think some of it comes down to your pers personality, uh, uh, who you are. Uh, Tim's, a, I think, an excellent communicator. And, um, you know, I think he finds some peace and solace. It's crazy. It's what Polisek is. I call him Polichek sometimes, but I think he does a lot better with a diet Mountain Dew with his charts out in front of him upstairs. So um, at least he and I won't. We've gotten into some heated arguments on the sideline that we're on national TV and we don't need that anymore. If you go back in the annals of ESPN, you'll see some. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to just let that be said. Anything else? All right, thank you very yeah. much, everybody. Thanks, there, Thanks Yeah, Greg. we got a question over here. So, yeah, Coach, this is Keith Kelly. I, I'm over in Cheyenne. I'm on the phone. Uh, what in particular did you do? You, have you liked about what Titus has done uh, with his opportunity this spring? He has uh, paid more attention to detail as far as his assignments. Uh, he's, I think, gotten stronger in the weight room. He's very athletic. His vision has improved. Um, his blocking on pass protection has improved as well. And so Titus and I have had some pretty frank discussions on, on his progress. 
some of my displeasure on maybe on some of his things that I thought he needed to shore up. And, you know, the things I've asked him to shore up, he certainly has. And so uh, I think he and I are seeing a lot of things the same way. I don't know if that could be said earlier, but it is now. And uh, so I'm encouraged. We just hope we can we can keep on making some progress with him because I think he can really make a difference for us. You're, you're going to let us down on the field on Saturday, right, Craig? Well, you got to talk to Tom Berman about that. <laughs> That's not my... That's not, I, I control what's in between the white lines, Davis, all the other things I can't control. So yeah. I'll be up in the box. All right. Okay. I, I can okay. tell you this, Davis, if, if we get a snowstorm in here and it's about uh, maybe a wind chill of five degrees, a guy from down South, I'm going to make sure you are down on the field. <laughs> okay. See how yeah. long you last down there. Appreciate it. All right. Peace guys. I'm out. <laughs> Hey, Braden, how are you, man? Oh, I'm good. How are you? Good, thanks. Um, so I was to ask Craig the same thing. Uh, you and, and Rome were in a heated battle in 2019. I believe you came out of the spring atop the depth chart, and then maybe a hamstring injury kind of held you up during the fall, and, and he ended up taking the lead, and, and you started one game. I'm wondering how you feel that battle is going right now, and if you think maybe you have an edge because you actually played under Jay Savell for six games last year. Um. You know, I don't really want to really call it a battle. I'd rather call it like a friendly competition, stuff like that, you know. Um, you know, I love Rome. Um, you know, I got a lot of respect for Rome, and uh, I know he has respect for me too. So, um, you know, right now it's just whoever's going to help the team better or help the team more um, in that aspect, so. Braden, what are you personally hoping to, to kind of get out of the spring game and, and what are you really kind of focused on for, for the defense? Um, honestly, for me, I would say uh, just getting more looks um, with the offense. Uh, the offense runs a lot of uh, a lot of different things. So, you know, uh, um, when we get the plays, trying to just, you know, adjusting off of them and uh, just getting more looks um, uh, from them. I think is the main thing. So, Braden, right. in, in terms of the offense, you know, going up against it every day, is it? You say it's different things. Is it a lot different formations? I mean, how much different is what they're running compared to what you guys run in Coach Vegan? Uh, I'm not. <laughs> I don't know if I. I kind of messed up back there. I don't know if I should really say too much uh, about the offense, but uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I can't say too much. I'm sorry. I kind of messed up back there. My bad. Well, you didn't. You didn't give away any national secrets, so. You're, you're <laughs> yeah. okay. Braden, how much uh, how much confidence did you gain last year by playing in those six games? You got a pick. Uh, you played good ball back there. You must be feeling pretty good coming into camp. Yeah, definitely. Um, I felt way faster than I than I have felt before. So. Um, the first game against Nevada, I'm not going to lie. It was pretty, pretty tough. Um, it was just a lot of things like, um, but just like, you know, not having fans there, just all that stuff. But, uh, after that, um, I kind of got my feet under me and I think I'm a way different player than I was, uh, the first week of against Nevada for sure. Yeah, Braden, you, know, you guys did play quite a few games, uh, you know, without fans. Uh, I, I'm curious, you know, there's, there's going to be tailgating, there's going to be fans at, at this spring game. One, just how odd is it playing in an empty stadium other than, you know, your teammates and the refs? And two, just I imagine it's got to be pretty exciting to kind of have things get normal again. Yeah, definitely. No, I'm not going to lie. Like the first game against Nevada threw us off a little bit and it took a little – a uh, while for us to get going um but um yeah as far as the spring game uh i think it'll be nice to have the fans back and i think it'll be the first um you know kind of big event that is kind of back to normal you know so i think once when that happens at least for me personally i know once when i see the fans and everything um this saturday it's going to feel a lot better than not having the fans, so.
Braden, you're one of the seniors that decided to come back, I guess, in a nutshell, uh, what made that decision for you? Um, honestly, I love the coaches and I love the guys here. Um, you know, I think, uh, you know, when you, when you play with, you know, dudes like, I don't know, I don't know, Zoe's standing right here. That's, that's what I was going to say, but, uh, playing with dudes like them, it, it's, it's kind of a no brainer. Um, if, you know, I, I feel like for me personally, if I quit, I felt like I would let, let, let them down. So. Um, if I could, I'd do another six years. Brayden, I know you call this a friendly competition, but I mean, deep down, how much do you want to win this job? I mean, just knowing this is it for you. This is your last go around. I mean, yeah, like, you know, it's, it's my last year for sure. So, you know, you want to go out with a bang. Um, but yeah, I don't want to, you know, sit here and, you know, talk down about Rome or anything like that, you know we're both really good athletes and whoever decides to start is, you know, that's, that's what it is. And it's going to, that's the best thing for the team. So. We got any more questions, guys. All right. Thanks, Braden. Thanks. Hey, guys. Braden. Is it working? Yep. All right, guys, I got Zoe here. Davis, why don't you go ahead and start us off. Alonzo, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. Uh, there's nothing new about the offense, like Braden was saying. We're, <laughs> we're doing the same stuff. Uh, um, well, for you, I mean, going back to the beginning of last year, you had been, you know, through this injury thing before. To have that happen, I mean, when did that injury happen? Just what was what was going through your mind at that point? Well, so it happened uh, like right before the season got canceled. Uh, we were doing like these walkthroughs and it was just a weird freak accident where I just, I just hit my shoulder weird and it just felt wrong. And uh, we got it checked out and they said it was like a torn labrum, but the season was still going on at that point. So I was just going to play the season and then get it after the season. But the day, the day the season got canceled, uh, the trainers were just like, you know, if we got this time, might as well, you know, fix it up completely. And it was, I was, I was completely down for it. But then like a week later we got the season back up or something like that. So I got to miss the season, but, at the same time, I got to fix an injury that's been that's pretty minor so far. So did you ever think about hanging it up with all these freak injuries? I know Sean Chambers said that it actually crossed his mind and you've kind of had this freak thing too. You know, uh, that's an interesting question. Uh, that's a question that like, I talk to my family about all the time, uh, especially after having several surgeries. But, you know, for me, I'm thinking like, hey, if I'm still able to run, walk, if I'm still able to pass that, I'm going to play football. I mean, that's what I came here for. And, you know, I, like, I understand if, like, my body was completely telling me I can't play football, but I know I have plenty of football in me. I know that it just gave me my opportunity. I'll have the – I'll be able to show that my body can still play football. So, I mean, yeah, the idea crossed my mind, but what does it actually ever – do I ever think about it? No. Alonzo, for you, what, what, what makes playing football worth it? I, I think a lot of people would have probably just kind of hung it up after all the injuries. You know, uh, that's a good question, too. Uh, I think what, you know, what uh, the relationship between me and football is that this is actually probably, football is probably one of the first times I ever felt part of like, you know, a friend group, a new family, especially even in, in high school. So, you know, coming here, playing for the University of Wyoming and meeting all my my new my friends for a lifetime and all these coaches that have done a great job coaching me. I mean, I think the, the least I could do is keep playing. And I think in my heart that playing football is just who I am you know it's a huge part of what I've done for my the whole for most of my life and you know that's just one part of me that I can't leave behind so Sean Chambers changed his number to two because his jersey had bad juju in it I got a couple questions for you is that why you shaved your head because you yeah. had, <laughs> had hair and second uh, of all, are you guys still called the dirt dogs uh so okay to answer the first question uh what's funny was I shaved my head because I shaved it during when I had uh, my shoulder surgery. So having one hand, you know, couldn't, I couldn't maintain it. Plus my mom didn't like the long hair. So I was like, you know what? I'll make her happy once. But uh, no, I just got the hair just to cut it. I mean, I don't, I'm not superstitious, but uh, the second part, yeah, we still call each other, each other, the dirt dogs. You know, that's a, that's a, uh, that's a word that we like to represent. And I think, you know, we still stick by that and we're still the dirt dogs, baby. <laughs>
How are you kind of feeling about the tackle room? Obviously, you've got three guys who have played a, a good amount of football. It, it, from your perspective, how do you kind of see things? Craig made it sound like it's it, that you and Frank are kind of ahead and Rudy is maybe a little bit behind. How do you kind of see it? Um, I think I see the tackle room as a bunch of friends that want to get better in football. I think all the relationship between all the tackles is really well. I mean, I have Frank, Rudy, and even the younger ones, we all hang out and do stuff together. So I think it's a good room. Uh, we definitely compete. We like to talk smack to each other. But, uh, no, it's, you know, whoever coach wants to put out there, the best five. But, you know, I just know that us tackles are having a fun time getting better with these new coaches and new schemes. So, Alonzo, coming off another injury, um, is there any particular area you've had to, you know, shake off some rust this, this spring? And, and do you feel 100% healthy? Um, I do. I feel 100% healthy. This is probably the best I've ever felt in a long time. But yeah, no, I mean, obviously not playing football for over a year. I think uh, my technique's a little rusty, but that's what spring ball is for is to get back into it. So, you know, I, I feel I felt rusty at the beginning of spring ball. But at this moment in time, I feel like um, I'm not 100% there with my skill yet, but it's improving drastically. When, when we talked to Sean a, a couple weeks ago, he was all smiles when we talked to him, too. And he kind of had this sort of, you know, fresh perspective on, you know, having had you know football taken away from him a few times. And, and he seemed like he was in a really good place mentally. It kind of feels like you're you seem like you're in a, a, a pretty good place mentally. It has, has this whole you know last year with everything crazy, the injuries, the covid kind of given you a, a fresh perspective on things. Yeah, I think the biggest thing, especially for players that have injuries, is just to stay optimistic. I mean, if you're going through an injury and you're missing time, the, the, least, the last thing you want to do is have a bad mentality. I mean, that would just make time go longer. But I think, no, being optimistic, I mean, we got new coaches, a new scheme, and so we, I got my year back to play football again. I mean, it's like a fresh start, honestly, even though I still only have one year left. I think this is a, uh, a great and new opportunity for me to just show as a who I am as a football player and as a person off the field. This offensive line zone has been really good over the last few years, as everybody knows, but have you ever been surrounded by this much talent? I mean, you're two, three deep at some positions. Oh, it's, it's amazing to see it. And, you know, just like going through this spring ball, like I step back and look at uh, the whole unit and it's like, man, like this is probably the best I've ever seen in the unit. And it, and it is, and it's give credit to us. Like, I know like these coaches, they came in and they give us what we need to get better. But, you know, after having several coaches here and there, you know, just the mentality this unit has, it's just, we keep, we want to play football and we want to get better and it's, we will do that, whatever it takes. Any more questions? All right, thanks guys.